My name is Jake Goslin, and I have a problem with automating every conceivable thing I can with Ableton Live. If this is your first time watching, my name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and slap that like button, or else this setup is just not going to work for you in your situation. So be sure to slap that like button. It's also going to help this video just get in front of more worship leaders so they can discover the magic of Ableton and automation. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos that show you how much time I have on my hands to mess around with this type of thing. And what I'm about to show you is definitely a more advanced way of using Ableton Live in worship, but if you want to start from step one, make sure you check out Worship Leader School because that's where I can take you by the hand, walk you through my whole setup process and workflow for running tracks with Ableton, for automating lyrics, lighting, and now even your camera gear with Ableton Live. So let's dive in to what you came here to see. So in front of me, I have this laptop that is running Ableton Live, and then I have this laptop that's running our ATEM software control. It's connected to our ATEM switcher uh, via just a local area network over ethernet. And if you're new to the ATEM video switchers, basically what these things do, they take all your video sources and they, you can also add your audio source into it as well. Um, and then it will just make all the cuts, it will overlay lyrics. Um, we even put like a little letter box on our video to give it kind of that like more cinematic look. And the ATEM really carries the brunt of all of the processing that has to happen to creating that final cut program video that you're going to then broadcast online. Blackmagic makes ATEM switchers that actually has the hardware buttons that a video switcher can manually operate to press the buttons or when you use the software here you can easily you know select between different cameras so um, you can't really see my multi-view probably but basically as I hit these different cameras on the top here this is this is the program uh, selection buttons that's going to select what camera is sent to our final program feed. So I'm just doing that manually by clicking with my cursor. And the cool thing about this software is that you can send MIDI messages to it to make these program changes. So in our studio, what I did is I created some MIDI cues in Ableton Live, which then map to the ATEM software control. And, and I'm just using a very basic setup right now. I only have three cues, camera one program, camera two program, camera three program. Um, so then I can just drop those cues in our time line in our songs and set list and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So assuming you already have Ableton Live in the ATEM software control up and running on your computers, there are two little apps that you're going to have to install to make this communication process between Ableton and the ATEM software control possible. So here are the two apps. They are running on the same computer as the ATEM software control. We've got first the Osculator app and what the Osculator does is it can listen to MIDI messages from your MIDI network and then it translates those into OSC messages. From there, those OSC messages are then sent into ATEM OSC and then that is what is triggering these different cues within the ATEM software. And if that didn't make any sense to you, that's okay, it doesn't make any sense to me. I just know it works. So I'm gonna link both of these apps below in the description. ATEM OSC is free, and the Osculator app is only like $20. So just go ahead and get it if you're serious about setting up this automation workflow. So when you get ATEM OSC open, make sure you configure it with your switcher's IP address. So this is the IP for mine, it's probably not the IP for yours, and you determine that IP address when you go and set up your switcher for the first time. Um, and then you, when, you'll know that it's connected. Um, ATEM OSC is connected to your ATEM when it says switcher name, it's, it detects it right here, and then there's a little green square. That means you're, you're A-OK, -okay, you're ready to go um, with the ATEM OSC app. Next, you're gonna wanna open up Osculator, and you wanna make sure that Osculator sees your MIDI device. So here I have a MIDI input port called Trax Rig MacBook. So we are using the Bohm Network app to get our computers to talk to each other over MIDI. And whenever you enable that app and you make a connection to another device, that device will show up on your computer as a, a MIDI device. So here we have Trax Rig MacBook. This is this MacBook running Ableton Live. So I have that selected as an input for the Trax Rig and then I have Osculator as my output because think think through what's happening. The Trax Rig MacBook is sending MIDI into um, Osculator and then it's going um, out of Osculator to ATEM OSC, and then from ATEM OSC, is, is, that's what's telling the ATEM what to do. So then, in Ableton Live, 
I created this little project called ATEM 3 Camera Switching Project. It's just a template where I dropped in some, some MIDI cues um, to make these camera switches happen. So I have three empty MIDI cues and all they are doing are program changes. So here's camera one program, I just put program one down here, camera two, program two, camera three, program three, and then I have the output for this track to go to Jake's MacBook Pro dash four. That's this computer running my HM software. And, so, and then here's how I mapped these MIDI cues into Oscillator and then got them to talk properly to ATEM. So I went, I went ahead and selected the tracks rig as my input. And then right now, it's just listening for a MIDI signal to come. So watch what happens when I press camera one program on my Ableton computer. You're gonna see um, that cue come up right here, it says program one. There's another important step you have to do here when you're mapping these cues. Watch what happens when I press like camera two. Nothing, nothing happens, it doesn't detect like a, a new unique note. So what I had to do is select this, go to edit, and then hit demux. You don't know what demux means? I don't either, but I know that you have to demux it. So now, when I press camera two, I do see a second cue, and then actually let's go back to camera one, we see the first cue, so now it's actually breaking up those different program change cues in, uh, from Ableton Live. Then I'll hit camera three. So now uh, we have three different program cues here from my computer. Zero is program one, one is program two, and, and two is program three, uh, if that makes any sense. And then what you gotta do is create a new event, event type, so you want it to send an OSC message, um, and then we want to set the value of this message over here. Um, and then you're just gonna go to rewrite an address. So here's where you're creating an OSC message for ATEM OSC to talk to the ATEM software. So the person who made this little app has this little show OSC addresses um, box right here, and it will show you all the, the addresses that you need to put in Oscillator to make this happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy um, this one, and I'll go back to Oscillator, go back to my address section here, and then press enter. And now uh, we've got uh, it going to A10 program one. That's for going to be our first program cue. And then let's go down. Actually, first let's just make sure it works. So I'm going to go back to camera two in my software. I'll go ahead and hit camera one here. And there you go. It works. You even saw the little green uh, status indicator uh, cue this one. So then if I want to go and program my second camera cue, I'm going to go to OSC message here and then I'm going to go to um, value, new value, and then I want, um, I'll paste in that, but then I'll change it to two. So ATEM program two, enter. We've created that queue. You can see it showing up here now. And then let's hit program two. And there we go, it queued program two. So that's how you set it up. And when you're done, you just go file, and save this project in Oscillator so it remembers your settings. So I'm gonna go back to the one I already made. And it's important to know that you, you need to keep this program running um, in the background on your computer running the ATEM software. You need to keep the Oscillator open and you need to keep the ATEM OSC open in order for this to happen. Think of these two apps as kind of like a communication bridge between Ableton and ATEM, um, and if that bridge isn't there, they're not gonna be able to communicate with one another. So once you've created your camera cues template in Ableton Live, you're just gonna wanna save it. I plan on making a more advanced template maybe down the road with lots more cues, but right now, I just need these three simple cues. So here's a full set list project, and uh, here's a track that I'm putting my Ableton cues and I'm just gonna call this Chad Vegas because this is like my little virtual Chad Vegas that I have in my Ableton uh, project right here. So then, look at this. I have my, my cues color coded and I recommend doing that. At first I wasn't and they were all orange and then it kind of makes it hard for you to, to know like which, which angle is which when you're looking at your Ableton timeline uh, without having to actually read the name of the clips. So I made some different colors for the different angles. Um, and then I just went ahead and I opened in my browser, I have my templates and resources folder, and then here is my project for camera switching. Here are my MIDI files, and then all I have to do is just drag those in. So if I want camera one right here, just drag it in. And then when I go ahead and the playhead hits that, it's gonna switch to camera one. And of course, you gotta make sure your MIDI routing works. So on this track, I have it going to that MacBook Pro uh, with the Bohm network, um, and it's, it's working the same way as my template file worked. And that's it, guys. Um, you just go ahead and you drop in your cues, and then it really will just 
add a lot more just dynamic visuals to your final product, especially if you don't have someone to run your video switcher on hand. Um, the downside is if you wanted to have cameras with someone like doing handheld cameras and moving around, it's gonna be harder to automate that because when you're doing things manually with a real video switcher operator, they can call shots and let your camera operators know what's coming up. Um, but this is really great for a small setup. You have a small team, but you have multiple cameras and you know what songs you're doing, you know, you know what's gonna happen at different parts of songs, and you can make those video cuts ahead of time. So, you know, in a song when I know the piano instrumental's coming up, I'll just drop in our camera three cue, which brings up uh, the piano player's hands on the keyboard. Like I already said, I'll link the apps that you're gonna need to make this connection uh, below in the description. If you would like help getting Ableton Live up and running for your worship ministry, please reach out to our team. Go to worshipleaderschool.com, apply to work with us, and we can help you get up and running with Ableton Live to run tracks and run automation in no time. So go to worshipleaderschool.com to learn more. Thanks so much for watching. Make Make sure you slap that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.